Okay, hi, uh, my name is Chris Sowers. I'm going to give you a demonstration of how to make a medium sized bowl. I got approximately three pounds of clay here that we just wedged up. So, first thing I do is I take, take my plastic bat and I put it on my wheel head here. I take up my wedged ball of clay and throw it into the center. Get a little bit of water, lubricate it. I'm going to cone up, and this helps homogenize the clay, soften it up, and center it on the wheel head. I had a really, I started off making a lot of uh, sculptures and uh, bronze and wood and uh, stone carvings, and I really liked clay for its uh, plasticity and how it's almost like it's a liquid stone that you can uh, form into any shape that you can conceive. So I really uh, enjoyed that. And I uh, also enjoyed the fact that you can make something that people use every day, such as a, a cup or a bowl or a plate that they use to serve their food on and that they have in their home. And for me that created a connection with other people and made something that was uh, useful and uh, kind of contributed something, you know, so to uh, the aesthetics and just uh, something that people can use in a utilitarian way, but also is handmade and, you know, that uh, created a meaningful connection for me that I really enjoyed. I enjoy the process too. It's something that it's just me and the clay and it's whatever form I decide to make. Yeah, that's one of the biggest tools I think for really uh, turning it just from abstract knowledge to or understanding to like a really knowledge of it is when you have to explain it to someone else then you really become familiar with it and you, you think about oh why is it that it's done this way why do I have to do that and you know it uh, it makes it more concise for me and it does learning or teaching really is the one of the best ways to learn it yourself I'm gonna let it sit for about a day before it stiffens up and then when it stiffens up enough I will trim a foot on it and once I do that I go and I put it in the kiln and we fire it until it gets to a bisque temperature, which means it's already vitrified, which means it will no longer break down in water. And after that, it's turned like this, it's like a, call it like a, a 3D uh, palette, which you could paint on, you know, it's like a blank canvas, a 3D canvas. And from here, this we glaze it, and that's, glaze is the, the paints, if you will, that we put on the pot that give it its different colors. And a lot of that has uh, all natural minerals, just like the clay is from the earth. All the, all the glazes also are just minerals, like uh, iron and cobalt and uh, manganese and uh, stuff like that, um, silica. Uh, the silica sand is what gives you the, the glossy effect in there because when the silica sand melts, it turns to glass. So basically you'll have a, a glass coating over the stoneware, which makes it food safe, makes it more durable and strong so uh, no food or bacteria will be able to penetrate into it. When you first started off on clay, it's, it's kind of like, uh, it, it's if you're you know, absolutely new to it, you're, you're like an infant at it. You know, you've, you're not really familiar with, with the material, you're not really sure why it does what it does and, you know, why it's affected by the different things, you know, the, the air, the water, the, the firing process, the glazes, you know. So you're really getting to know a, a whole new discipline, a whole nother art form that's completely different than doing painting or stone sculpture, you know. So you, you start off kind of doing pinch pots and coil pots, a lot of hand building. You know, and so my first first semester, 
the university was learning learning about the material, learning about the glazes, learning about the firing process, and then you move on to learning on the wheel, which puts you right back to square one again, because just learning to center a ball of clay on a, a centrifugal on a moving wheel is, is quite challenging. And you know, a lot of times you don't even get it to the end of the semester. Right about the time you think, wow, I'm just getting the hang of it, you know, the class is over. So it, it, takes, it takes a while just to get comfortable with the material and understand the, the process. But uh, so it's it's a learning process. Even even now, I've been doing it for eight years, which isn't very is very long. You know, I'm just eight years old <laughs> at this process, and it's it's still you're still I'm still discovering new things. And I'm still you know it's still quite challenging and exciting. So um, it's there's always a new new aspect of pottery which you can explore, whether it's a different kind of clay body, which is a different glazes, which is a different firing process, you know, which is a taller forms or sculptural forms or, you know, functional work. So there's there's limitless variations that you can uh, explore within the ceramics. Well, uh, the learning process is always is continual and it always helps to keep it fresh in your mind, I uh, took a couple years off where I was doing other things, construction and working with the Forest Service, and coming back into a, a structured class kind of helps helps remind me of the things which I've forgotten, and also just uh, get, gives me a more structured environment in which to to learn to work, and it gives me feedback as well for with uh, with the different potters here and they you know they say oh that looks good or you might want to try this or I've seen this somewhere else so it's the feedback and the, the community atmosphere which exists in the community studio which um, really helps elevate the work and kind of gives me it gives me a little more uh, it gives me more connection than just working by myself in the studio um, I've I've been uh, taking classes here at the university for uh, for a few years now. Um, I've I graduated from the program with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in uh, 2003. So I've been uh, coming in and out of the studio, and I have my own studio at my home, which I work out of. And uh, so I probably done, geez, you know, 12, 15 classes. Right now, I kind of do a independent study. And I'm just uh, using ex using the studio as a place to experiment with stuff, and to, and uh, right now I've been throwing a series of functional work, which is these these cups and these bowls and plates and pieces like that. Why is it I do this? What do I enjoy about this? Why you know what is what is my passion? What is my muse? You know, so. But it's it's fun, you know, from all aspects of it. And there's many different aspects that I enjoy about the process, and that's what keeps it fresh. That it's not, it doesn't get stale. I'm not just doing one thing. You know, there's so many different uh, different areas to explore. Whether it's you know, from myself, my attitude, how I'm interacting with the clay, to how other people are interacting with these pots, and to you know the challenge of making the form to you know, the, the frustrations of, of, you know, working through a process, you know, and, you know, the whole thing, when inspiration strikes you and you're like, oh, wow, I hadn't thought about doing that like that, or, and then, you know, you can explore some new aspect to, you know, to trying to refine something and, you know, create that, the discipline to do it. So there's, you know, every side of the coin is always there, and I try to, try to keep that in mind when I'm making things that, you know, it's, it's you know everything is evolution, and uh, you know I'm just this is where I am right now in this moment of it, and uh, I enjoy it. And so what else? What else is there except try to enjoy and be happy in the moment that you have?